بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأنا أعلم وأستغفرك لما لا أعلم أحبت في الله something very important that we have discussed in the past but it has been brought to my attention the need for it presently is the dangers of sects like Jamaat al ahbash and we know that the Prophet وسلم, said that his ummah would split and divide as is mentioned in the hadith of iftirah where the Prophet وسلم, said iftaratat al-yahud the Prophet said the Jews would break into 71 sects, the Christians into 72 sects, my woman into 73 sects, all of them in the fire, except one. And they said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon, what my companions are upon. Letting us know that there is a safe set from the fire. Letting us know there is a minhaj and a methodology. And that is the minhaj and methodology of Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. That is the minhaj and me methodology of the self of this Ummah. That is the minhaj and methodology of Ahlul Hadith. That is the minhaj and methodology of Ahlul uh, methodology of Ahla Ath uh, Athar. The people of the Athar. And Jamaat Ahbash are far from it. Although they claim, they often claim, you, you hear that they say, we from Ahl Sunnati will Jamaat, we make takfir of the Wahhabis. We make takfir of Muhammad ibn al Wahhab. We make takfir of Islam, uh, uh, Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Although they don't refer to him as Sheikh al Islam, but even Ahl Bid'ah from most of the other Tawa'if refer to him as uh, Sheikh al-Islam because of his vast and extensive knowledge and itqan in every fin of Islam of all the Islamic sciences Rahmatullah, Rahmatin, Wasiya, Ali But Jamaat al-Ahbash with their false claims to be from Ahl Sunnah they fit under the Qaeda which the ulama of Islam, the, the, the fuqaha especially mention the qa'ida al-ibr bi haqa'iq laysa bi musamiyat that the proof in reality of something is in its substance, in its reality not in its claim so they claim to be from Ahl Sunnah but their actions their worship their aqidah their methodology all differs with Islam all differs with Islam and all differs with the madhab and madhaj of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabin kirima rahmana ars istawa. The most merciful rules above his throne. In, more, in seven places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Thumma istawa ala ala arsh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, then he rules above his throne. This is what Allah says about himself. But what is Ahl Zandaka, Ahl Batil, the people of falsehood, what do they claim? What do they say? The people of bid'ah, wa khurafat. They say, if you affirm what Allah said about himself, wa'iyadu billah. If you affirm what Allah said about himself, then you now have put Allah in a place. And you have now made Allah in a direction. What does Ahlul Sunnah say regards to this? How do we answer this? How did the Salaf of our Ummah deal with this falsehood that came before Jamaat al-Ahbash uh, from the Ashaida, from the Mu'tazila, from the Jahmiya, and other groups of uh, innovation. Ahl Sunnah, for one, did not begin an argument like this because they accepted, as was the minhaj of the Salaf. This has to do with minhaj, meaning the methodology of how we look at the text, how we look at the Quran, and how we look at the Sunnah. That they looked at the Sunnah, the Asl is looking at the Zahir of the, the Nasus. This is what the Salaf were upon. 
إن أئمة السلف يقتصرون في إثبات الأسماء والصفات على الكتاب والسنة ولا يتجاوزونهما فما ورد إثباته لله أثبتوه وما ورد نفيه نفوه The Ayyimah of the Salaf, the Imams of the Salaf of this Ummah, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not the Ummah of Jumat al-Akbash, but the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they suffice themselves with the text of, with regards to the uh, divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the text of the Quran and the Sunnah, because this is what Allah, what Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. They suffice with that. I'm comfortable with that. For me, that's sufficient. And that's what the A'imma before us suffice with. They didn't go beyond that. So they didn't ask how. The kafia, As Imam Malik said, when he was asked in the Haram, he was teaching in the Prophet Wasallam's masjid. And a man came during the dars and said, Oh, Abu Abdullah, how did he rise above his throne? This was the first bid'ah with regards to, this is one of the first documented, uh, innovated claims and, and, and asking these types of questions because the Salaf, they suffice with the apparent meaning of the text. Ar-Rahman al Ar-Rahman al The most merciful rose above his throne. We don't ask how. We don't say it's like this. We don't say it's like I rise, uh, arise in the courtroom. We don't say like this. No, we don't say the tishbi. This is from the intellect of Ahl Bid'ah. Ahl Bid'ah are the ones who came up with these newly ways of looking at things that the people before didn't. They didn't question Allah. They didn't question the Prophet sallallahu They didn't question the nusus. They didn't question the menhaj and the methodology of the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala ajma'in. Whereas people like Jamaat al-Abbash, and you'll find that they speak ill of some of the Sahaba. So that means that they have a commonality with who? With the Rafida, a Zanadika, those groups of the Shia that curse the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those closest to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who were there for the Wahi. Those who carried the narrations of the Prophet Those who compiled the Quran They traverse that path. This is the path of Jamaat al-Abbash. They have similarities and we don't know where the influence and that would probably be those who best study them in detail to know where, where and why they came with that similar uh, deviance as the Rafida and the other Zanadatha. So we see that Ahlul Sunnah, they adhere to the text in its literal form unless there's evidence from the Quran and or the Sunnah to illustrate that that is not uh, to be understood literal. And Ahlul Sunnah, as the, the Shaykh mentioned, that they adhere to those texts as they were revealed and that uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed about himself, Ahl Sunnah affirms about Allah. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negated about himself on the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa or in the Quran, Ahl Sunnah negates in the same regards. And that way, you're safe. You're safe with regards to your creed because you took directly from the sources and you understood them as it were revealed in which language? And this is the next point. So the Shaykh said that the this shows us the Minhaj. This is the methodology of Ahl Sunnah versus the Ahbash and the Sha'ina and the Mu'tazila and others. Ahl Sunnah, their way, their methodology, their madhab, their Minhaj, the Minhaj of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, Ajma'in, 
was that they took the text in its apparent meaning, according to its literal meaning. In accordance with how it is understood in the Arabic language, which the Quran was revealed in the Arabic language. Not what the Mu'tazila understood with their new Mustalahat, because the, you, what you have to remember is a lot of those groups which at Bash, you send it minhum, or you, that they, they take from them that they were built from their Aqidah because they are, uh, uh, Abdullah Hariri had uh, uh, a lot in common with the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila and other sects. It wasn't everything that he brought wasn't just a new bid'ah, but it was piggybacking off the bid'ah of those who, his salaf. And he also, from what we know of him, from his own websites and from what his followers say and, and what they praise him and what you'll find on his books, that he took his aqidah and he made bay'ah from various Sufi turuk, very various Sufi groups and their ways of understanding. So it just goes to show that his tarbiya was on various types of dalal. It wasn't just one, but it was various types of misguidance. Took some misguidance from this group, misguidance maybe from the Naqshbandis, misguidance from the, uh, this set, misguidance from the Tijaniya, and took bay'ah to various uh, sects of misguidance. Wa'iyadhin billah. And the problem with that, it isn't bay'ah which would have been like Akhwan al-Muslimin in some of these recent groups, but rather these were sects. These were people who had a whole complete program of misguidance, of grave worship, of making tawaf around graves, of, uh, of claiming uh, infallibility, and all of these other falsehoods that you'll find from the extreme ones from amongst those groups. وَعِيَذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ كُفْرٍ وَالشِّرْكِ وَالزَّنْدَقَ وَالضَّلَالِ that gives us a, a little bit of insight of how Ahl Sunnah, we don't ask how. And we don't make an inference and, and infer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat are, are like his creation. Rather, we affirm and follow the ayat which gives us another aspect of the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ لَيْسَ كَمِتْ لِي شَيْءٍ وَسَعِيُّ الْمَصِيرِ لَيْسَ كَمِتْ لِي شَيْءٍ There is nothing that resembles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing like him. Spirits, men, jinn, animals, the creation, nothing. Allah said it about himself. Then what did he subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Allah negated that there's anything that resembles him. And he affirmed that Allah, that he subhanahu wa ta'ala has hearing and sight. Letting us know, yes, we have hearing and we have sight. But our hearing and sight is not a lot like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect and complete. Every other thing that hears and sees within, it, within his creation has nuts. They have shortcomings. I can only hear what's in this room. And perhaps a little bit outside. The ant can only hear what's in his ant kingdom. I can't hear what's going on for the ants that are in this room. Limited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and hears everything. He is the all seeing. He is the all hearing. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jamaat al Ahbash, la. They go away from that. And they say, You've put Allah in a direction. you put Allah in a makan. And you've made a resemblance between Allah and his creation. And here we just negated it. This is what Shaykh al Islam did. He negated it. This is what Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab He negated it. He negated uh, 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 the fact that. Uh, 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 anything which differed from the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf. He negated that. They followed the minhaj of the Salaf with regards to those divine attributes, names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. They followed what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. They, they negated any tashbi and resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His creation. Jamaat al Bash also, from their misguidance, that we have to be aware of a habitatillah. Aside from their debating and arguing about the text and going to their intellect instead of going to the way it was understood by the early generations, they use some text to verify the fact of Mekah Tabarak, for example, to, to seek blessings from 
saints or the dead or the grave or or uh, the Prophet Sallallahu after his death at Aisalatul Salam. And one of the texts that gives us insight of how the Salaf of this Ummah dealt with this. First we start with the, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu He said a dua wa ibadah. Supplication is worship. So that means if it's worship we don't devote it, we don't direct our supplication to anyone or anything besides Allah We don't even supplicate to the Prophet. We don't say, Ya Nabi Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, please help my wife give birth. O Nabi Allah, please bless me with another wife. O Nabi Allah, please increase my risk. O Nabi Allah, please uh, let me have this easy birth, childbirth, whatever the case may be. Al Sunnah says that. That should be. Because the Prophet Sallallahu said, A dua hu ibadah. And Allah says all throughout the Quran, and we mentioned this in one of our prior sittings about the importance of dua to Allah not to the Prophet not to Abdullah Haradi, not to Tijani, no, not to Abdul Qadir Jailani, not to anyone except Allah and seeking the Tabarak. Salam ibn Waradan said, I saw Anas ibn Malik doing salam on the Prophet Then he put his back towards the wall of the grave and did dua. He supplicated what? He turned his back to the grave of the Prophet and he made dua. And this is from which there is no dispute between scholars. And the dispute is only in the time of salam. So the only difference between the scholars is the time in which to give salams to the Prophet Abu Hanifa says one should also face the Qibla during salam. And he should not face the grave. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi And other than him said, one should face the grave during salam only, and none of the four imams said to face the graves during dua, except a lied story, a fabricated story, upon Imam Malik, rahmatullahi And his madhab is opposed to that. The madhab, those we who know what Imam Malik was upon best because they were the ones who preserved, they were his students and they preserved his madhab in fiqh, in understanding fiqh. They were opposed to that. And they know that it was a fabricated story upon Imam Malik. And the same for the story reported from upon Shafi'i that he made a purpose of dua at Abu Hanifa's grave. This is from a blatant and obvious lie. Rather, they said to face the Qibla during dua, and not to face the grave so that dua is done on graves, because dua is worship, as it is established from Tirmidhi, in marfu form. A dua huwa ibadah, that supplication is worship. And the Salaf from the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala majma'in, and the Tabi'in made singled ibadah, they singled out ibadah to Allah and they did not do anything on the grave except what the Prophet ﷺ had permitted from salam to his companions and it stood far for them and mercy for them. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he rejected this narration in his book, Iqtada, Surat al-Mustaqim. Ibn al-Qayyim said in uh, Igatha, he said, the story related from a Shafi'i that he made supplications as Abu, at Abu Hanifa's grave is an open lie. Sheikh Zubair Ali Azay mentioned that it is fabricated and refuted those who use this athar. And he said, Umar ibn uh, Ishaq is majhul, meaning one of the narrators was unknown. So we don't say that this is a sound narration. Ahabatifillah, the point being without going deep into that issue, and it suffices us to know the misguidance of groups like uh, Jamaat al-Ahbash and that they quickly rush to make takfir of anyone who opposes them which is one of the pillars of Hizbiya and which is a trait from the Khawarij so Jamaat al-Ahbash is a group of innovated innovators who piggyback off the innovations of Ahl al-Dalal who preceded them and this is the case with most of Ahl al-Bidah that they don't just make a bid'ah something new, but usually they have piggy piggyback and they have taken from the usul of some of those fir uh, that preceded them. So here we have Jabat al-Ahbash who make quick 
uh, take fear of anyone who disagrees with him, even if they don't hear words of disagreement, but just the fact that they praise someone from Ahlul Sunnah, they'll make take fear of you. This is the trait of who? It is the trait of those who the Prophet ﷺ said, Al Khawarij Kilab al Nam. The Khawarij are the dogs of the hellfire, meaning those people who may take fear of the people for the major sins. And in this day and age, we find those people who make take fear of anyone who disagrees with them. This was also a trait of the original Khawarij. They make take fear of those who uh, disagree with them. You know, they made their blood lawful. Khalas, you don't agree with me in this issue of Hijra? You don't agree with me in this issue of this? You are a kafir. Your blood is lawful. I will kill you. This is what they were upon. This is the deviance and misguidance that groups like ISIS and these modern day, uh, um, modern day jama'at, these groups, what they're upon. Anyone who disagrees with them, they're a disbeliever and their blood is lawful. Wa iyad billah min kufr wa shirk wa dalal wa bid'a wa khurafat. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and forgive us of our many shortcomings. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam.